Hi, my name is Anu Hea Brown and I'm with Seattle Theatre Group, a nonprofit organization that runs the Paramount, the Moore, and the Neptune Theater. Today we will be diving into some basic text analysis and some theater tools in order to help you get a better gauge of a script when working on it. Our basic goals today are going to be as follows. We would uh, we are going to learn text analysis vocabulary, approach basic text analysis with the Lion King, as well as find different ways to approach a script based on our knowledge of text analysis. So let's say you were asked to work on a show. Very exciting. You may be a little excited, you may be a little nervous or a little scared. Don't worry, this is all part of the process. Sometimes we can get a script and we don't know where to start or go from there. The thought of starting a script may seem very scary, which may prolong prolong our process of starting the work that we need to do in order to perform the show. Today, I hope to give you some tips and guidance to diving into a script and finding some playable dramatic values for you today. Now you may ask what a playable dramatic value is. That's so funny because we have it on our next slide. A playable dramatic value is a fancy word for anything that might ignite you or get you excited about the script. This could be a variety of different things and hopefully it will be some things that we get to dive into today. Now, um, the stuff that we're going to dive in today is just basic text theater analysis. Um, we're going to be looking very simply and very closely at some characters in The Lion King that I will hope will get, help you get a better gauge of basic text analysis in a theatrical form and a theatrical narrative. Now that we know what we are working on, let's get started. The first word that we have today is objective. Now an objective is, I would say, the most basic thing a character can have in a narrative. Every character in a narrative will have an objective, and sometimes as an audience we like to see through the course of the play if they actually achieve the narrative that they have. This can also be the case with a protagonist. Now a protagonist is someone who moves the play forward, they move the narrative along. Um, we most commonly love to see the protagonist get their objective. And now that I've been talking so much about an objective, let's get the definition for it. So the objective is what the character wants. Every person, every character in a show has an objective. They have something that they want, something that they're striving for through the course of the story. Now it's up to us as the actors, as the directors, sometimes as, even as the designers to figure out what might that objective be? What might that person want to achieve within the course of the story? So that we know what they're playing for and we know what they want. And so that is gonna be objective. I will also say that the parallel to the protagonist would be the antagonist. Now the antagonist is someone who is uh, refuting the movement of action or is um, impeding the movement of action. They're most commonly the bad guy, the guy that we're not rooting for, um, the person, excuse me, they're most likely the person that, they, that we are not rooting for in the script or in the narrative. So most commonly, we want to see that person not get their objective through the course of the narrative. And so that is objective. When you think of ob objective, I want you to think of want. Objective want, what the character wants, what the character is striving for through the course of the narrative. Next, we're going to move on to obstacle. Now, obstacle, I always like to think of impede or block. What is blocking the character from getting what they want? So the obstacle is whatever is stopping the character from achieving their objective. Now this could be a variety of many different things. It could be theoretical, it could be methodical, it could be physical, there could be something physically stopping the character. It could even be emotional. Is there some sort of eternal conflict that's stopping the character from achieving what they want through the course of the narrative? So when you think of obstacle, you can do this fun gesture for no, which really just says, uh, I'm stopping the character from achieving their objective. I'm stopping the character from achieving what they want. Next, we're going to go into tactics. Now, the last slide I talked about obstacle, and the slide before I talked about objective. So we touched on what the character wants and what is stopping the character from getting what they want. And that can seem a little sad, right? Um, I just introduced this character. Obviously, we're going to be rooting for them, and now we just find out that they can't get what they want. Do not fret because tactics is the third vocabulary word that we're going to learn today that will really help kind of bypass the obstacle. So tactic is what the character does in order to achieve their objective. Now this could be 
a variety of many, many different things. It's going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on what, who the character is, what the character wants, and how the character gets it. I always like to frame tactics in the form of active verbs. This just ensures that we are actively pursuing something and we're actually pursuing another character. So I have put a short list of active verbs below that really show that we, are, we might be physically doing something, we might be doing something in the course of our dialogue. So then when you start to look in the text, you can say, oh, this line might be attached to this active verb, or might be attached to something that they're doing in order to get their objective. So it really just cleanly ties everything in together, and it ensures that you are staying consistent with your character, you're following what your character wants, maybe what's getting in their way, and different ways that they might, through their dialogue or through their actions, uh, achieve that objective. And that's really for you to figure out. So now that we have touched on objective, wants, and needs, obstacles, impeding or stopping, and tactics. I, I like to think of tactics as like a grabbing motion, sort of just being like, I'm gonna get it. So whenever you think of tactics, I hope you think of I'm gonna get it. Um, and that is framed in active verbs. Now that we have a good gauge of objective, obstacle, and tactic, I have provided this short little exercise that we're gonna do in order to get you further familiar with all three concepts. So let's say I am taking a test. I am taking a test and it is probably a really important test. So let's say that it's like the ACT, the SCT. I hope that that's a general global thing. But let's say I'm taking a test and it will depend my, it will change my entire future. It's very important. It's crucial. It could determine my future. I reach into my backpack and I realize that I have forgot the most important thing to take the test, a pencil. What is my objective? I'm gonna give you guys at home 30 seconds to think about it and I will actually be attaching some footage of me washing my hands within those 30 seconds. Did I say minutes? I'm so sorry, 30 seconds. So I will be checking back in 30 seconds and we will see what the answer is. Now that we are back from our 30 second hand washing video, I have the answer for what my objective would be. The correct answer to this question is my objective would be to pass this test. So I want to pass this test, obviously. I want to get a good grade on this test as it might determine my future. So as I said before, I'm, the things we know, I'm taking this test, I want to succeed in this test, this test is super important and I do not have a pencil. What might be my obstacle in this scenario? As I have said before, I'm gonna give you folks at home 30 seconds. And during those 30 seconds, you are gonna be seeing some fun dance moves that I will be attaching below. Awesome. Now that we are back from our 30 second break, I'm going to be showing you the answer to this question. What is my obstacle? The correct answer is my obstacle is that I do not have a pencil. So the thing that is stopping me from achieving or passing this test is I do not have the utensil in order to take this test. So now let's say I look over to the desk next to me and I see that my neighbor has an extra pencil on their desk. What might be some tactics that I might do in order to potentially achieve the pencil on their desk? 
I'm going to be giving you guys 30 seconds to think about it at home and I will be sanitizing my objects during that time. I will check in within 30 seconds. Awesome. So we are back. And these are a few tactics that I have put below. That might be some tactics that I might do to my neighbor in order to get their pencil from their desk. There are so many tactics that you can use. Um, and that's kind of, the, I personally think that's the cool thing about theater or just any sort of narrative element is that it's really contingent on the person to figure out what those tactics might be. I just listed a few three of the most basic ones that came to mind. If you have some tactics in this realm, um, then you most likely got this answer right. So here are a few. I might compliment my neighbor. So I might go to my neighbor and say, hi neighbor. Oh my gosh, I love that shirt that you're wearing today. Do you mind if I borrow your extra pencil? Basically, I'm kind of buttering my neighbor up, right? I'm getting, I'm building rapport with my neighbor in order to maybe potentially borrow their pencil. I might convince my neighbor. I might say, hey, I, hey neighbor, I actually lost six hours of sleep last night studying for this test and I am so silly and I forgot my pencil. Do you mind if I actually borrow this pencil from you? So this might be a different way that I could build rapport with my neighbor and maybe convince my neighbor to lend me that extra pencil. The third one that I put is bartering. So I might make a deal with my neighbor. I might say, hey neighbor, I have a proposition for you. I will mow your lawn for six weeks if you let me borrow that pencil. <laughs> I know that may seem like a silly barter, but you know, the test is a big deal. So. So we're gonna do what we can do in order to achieve that test. The most important thing is that characters in a play will do whatever they can in order to achieve their objective. Theater is interesting when it is high stakes. Theater is interesting when everyone is playing to win and theater is interesting when everyone is playing to achieve their objective. So while you folks at home may think, oh my gosh, Bartering with your neighbor, that sounds like pretty risky. In good plays, people risk a lot to get what they want. So if you got three of those answers correct, great job. You're getting a good gauge of what objective, obstacle, and tactic is. If you just got a few answers right, do not worry at all. We're going to be diving into the Lion King as well to look at these. All right, so now we will be getting into one of my favorite stories that I had the privilege of teaching to a few kids this year. Uh, we will be diving into The Lion King. Now, The Lion King is one of the shows that is taught through the STG DMIS Disney Musicals in Schools program. I was a Disney Musicals and Schools instructor, and so I was able to team up with a team of elementary school teachers, myself, and another teaching artist, kind of spread the love of The Lion King to a few kids at their school. The Lion King is a great narrative. I like to use this narrative because it's very basic. A lot of people know what The Lion King is. A lot of people know the characters in The Lion King. Uh, the Lion King has thematic themes of family, nature, love, and legacy. We see a lot of those things within the course of the narrative. And so we will be diving into it. It is a classic in the Disney canon, I would say. I know that can be a little debatable. I don't know who would debate against it, but I would say that it is a classic staple in the Disney canon. And I also like to pick this narrative because it has a bunch of different characters who want different things. And so we really get to see that within the course of the story. All right, so with that, we move on to the most, I would say, popular, lovable character in The Lion King, Simba. 
he is the protagonist of the story. So he is the one moving the story forward, moving the action forward. He's also the one that the audience is rooting for. You know, we want to see Simba come out of the story winning and on top. He is the rightful heir of the savannah, and we follow this character the closest, I would say, within the narrative. We have the most insight on who he is, what he wants to become, I would say, more than ev any character in the narrative. We follow him throughout the scenes, we see him develop over time. As far as his character arc goes within the narrative, uh, he is the one that we're following the closest. Next we have, I would say, the foil to Simba, which is Scar. Scar is super fun. He's the antagonist of the narrative, so he's the one who is impeding that action or negating that action. His audience, you know, the audience doesn't really seem to empathize with Scar. You know, we don't want to see Scar win when this story is over. We, I think, would get catharsis seeing Scar fail throughout the course of this narrative. And I would also argue that he is a foil for Simba. So the more that we see Scar and his kind of plotting ways, the more that we kind of empathize with Simba. This can also be vice versa. The more that we see Simba being this person who has all these dreams and all of these things that they want to achieve, the more that we kind of dislike Scar and we dislike what Scar is gonna be doing within the course of the show. So now that we have learned obstacle, tactic, and objective, I would love to apply this model with these characters. So first we're going to start off with Simba. What is Simba's objective in the course of The Lion King? I'm so happy you asked. I'm going to be answering. Simba, this could go one or two ways. So you could argue that Simba's objective would be to rightfully be the heir of the savannah. Uh, some textual evidence that may support this is his song, I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Very straightforward, he just talks about how he cannot wait to rule the savannah. One might even argue that an objective, and maybe not even his full objective, but definitely something he's considering is to bring honor to his legacy. So we see this with his relationship with his father, Mufasa, you know. He wants to make his father proud. He wants to make his father happy and he wants to carry that legacy of rightfully ruling the savannah and bringing peace to all the animals. Next we're going to dive into Simba's obstacle. What is something that is stopping Simba from achieving his objective of being the rightful king of the savannah? I would say our most obvious answers are some that we mentioned before. His uncle Scar is obviously stopping him from being the king of Savannah, and one might even argue that it may be the internal conflict that Simba has with himself. We see, these, we see this most textually uh, with the scene with him and Nala, where he talks about how he can never go back and um, he doesn't want to be king anymore. We see Simba kind of wrestle with himself, wrestle with himself, change, wrestle with himself through uh, some really dramatic events. So yeah, you could argue one of two things. You could say that it might be his uncle Scar, and you could also argue that it might be his internal conflict. What are some of Simba's tactics? So what are some of the things that Simba does in the course of this narrative in order to bypass his obstacle and achieve his objective? He reveals the secret of his father's death to the animals of Savannah. So he goes to the Savannah and he says, you know what? Hey, what Scar told you was wrong. I saw everything. So he brings truth and light to the situation. He challenges his uncle. He gathers the courage to challenge his uncle in um, securing his rightful role of the leader of Savannah. He collaborates with his friends, Nala, Timon, and Pumbaa in order to help him. And we see this in this lovely, lovely story. Now we're gonna kind of switch gears and jump into Scar. So what is Scar's objective? Most obviously Scar's objective is to be king of Savannah. He wants to rightfully own the Savannah and he wants to be the leader of Savannah. We see this, I would say most obviously in the first scene of Lion King um, when Simba is born. What is Scar's obstacle? So what is stopping Scar from achieving his objective? 
Um, I just put the most obvious. You could probably argue a few different things. His brother Mufasa and his nephew Simba. So we see this in uh, the circle of life. Uh, Scar is not too happy about Simba being born because it means that there is another heir or rightful heir to the savannah that is not Scar. So we see that textually most in that section of the narrative. What are some of Scar's tactics? So what are some, some of the things that Scar does in the course of the narrative to kind of support securing his objective? This is most commonly conspiring to kill his brother and we see this in the stampede scene. Um, he also incites fear in Simba. He sends Simba to the elephant graveyard. He tells Simba to never come back to the savannah again. And uh, most commonly paralleling Simba, he manipulates a group of nearby hyenas to be his accomplices. So that is basically our model applied to the example that I used with the test, as well as the example that I used with the Lion King. I hope this was a really helpful way to get a lens and look through this model of objective obstacle and tactic. And we are nearing our conclusion. These are just a few things that I would like to send you home with to think about um, while we're nearing the end of this lesson. These are basic tools to dive into the text. So no text work is enough text work. You can always do more. Personally speaking, me as an actor, I love to do a lot in order to support my characterizations that I have. Um, but these are just basic tools to get you comfortable into diving into the text. But yes, please do more work. You can look into everything. You can look into the, um, you know, how does that make a character talk? How does that make a character move? Um, what are some spatial things that a character might play with in order to achieve their objective? Which brings us to our next bullet point. You can start adapting these characterizations you create um, almost instantly. So this is really just to give you a good gauge and then start kind of making those creative artistic choices from there. And lastly, they are tried and true and exist for every narrative. So you can take this model of objective, obstacle, and tactic and apply it to any narrative. They will work for every narrative you have and hopefully they'll be able to give you more of a gauge of a narrative that you feel like you can't relate to or is a little bit too complex for you or just something that just seems uh, difficult. This is definitely a model that I've adapted for a lot of more denser works that just allow me to get a better gauge of what I'm going to be doing in the course of the show. And it would not be a great lesson if I didn't send you home with some homework. So some homework that I have is take your favorite story, movie, or play and do this method. So find your favorite characters and see if you can figure out what their objective, obstacle, and tactic is. Think about what they want, think about what's getting in their way and what they do to get what they want. Make sure it's active and it inspires you and take a step further on on how to use these active verbs and how they can manifest on stage. Not everyone in the story gets what they want, but everyone in a story tries and they do try hard. So thank you guys so much for sitting in with me and kind of diving into some text. I hope you guys have some great, a great day and I hope that you guys stay safe out there.